Apple just released the biggest iPhone update ever. iOS 18 is finally here with a ton of new ways to customize your iPhone, a number of new features that we've been waiting on forever, and some other secret changes that Apple has barely talked about. If you just updated your iPhone, let me show you everything that's new, starting off with the brand new home screen, where for the first time, you can now move your icons anywhere you want. They're no longer locked to the top left corner of the screen. You can drag them into any pattern or organization that you'd like. And it's not just that. When you go into jiggle mode, there's a brand new customize section for your icons, where you can now also change the color of every single icon on your phone to a particular color scheme. You can even get as specific as picking a certain color from your wallpaper by tapping on the eyedrop icon and then dragging it to the section that you want your icons to match, which is a crazy level of customization that I thought we would never see on the iPhone. Although I actually just really like the new dark set of icons that Apple has released because rather than changing the entire color of the icon, it just changes elements to be dark, which looks really good good at night. You can also make your app icons bigger in iOS 18 by selecting the large section up here at the top, which removes the app label icon below, but it gives your home screen a much cleaner look than before, and it's absolutely something I'm going to be rocking for the next year. Next on the home screen, you can finally lock apps in iOS 18, as when you tap and hold on an icon, you can require Face ID as an added level of security to get into that app's information. So now every time you open that app, it will require your Face ID scan to get in. But what if you wanted to take that a step further. What if you didn't want someone to know that you had a certain app installed on your iPhone in the first place? Well, with iOS 18, you can now fully hide apps, as when you are locking them with Face ID, there's an option to lock it and hide it completely, and it will live now in a new place in your app library at the very bottom. This year, there's a brand new hidden section that doesn't show you what's inside until you tap on it. And important to note here is that the hidden apps folder looks the exact same on everyone's iPhone until you get inside. So whether you have 100 hidden apps or zero, the outside looks the same. What doesn't look the same this year is the entirely new version of Control Center, which Apple has redesigned to now include pages, including a cool gesture where you can slide down from the top right of your screen and continuously scroll through the pages with one gesture. And it works exactly like the new home screen. You can move your toggles around and choose exactly where they're placed. And you can also inline resize widgets to make them larger in your Control Center or smaller, getting rid of them entirely. When you're in Control Center, by the way, definitely check out the new flashlight, which Apple has rebuilt from the ground up with an entirely new UI that looks so cool and gives you new functionality. Not only can you continue to adjust the brightness of the flash like you could before, but you can now adjust the width or the focus of the beam, just like a physical flashlight, which is wild to see that Apple just built this in through software. Plus, if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or newer with the action button, you can now assign any Control Center control to the action button, giving you way more customization over what happens when you press it. Plus, with iOS 18, you can also change out your controls on the lock screen. So the default flashlight and camera toggle that we've had for as long as I can remember, yeah, those are fully customizable now, just like every part of iOS 18, to something that you would actually want to pick. So now any one of your control center controls can be easily accessed with just a tap and hold on your lock screen. So those are all the new customization features in iOS 18. But throughout all the apps on your iPhone, Apple's also made some pretty major changes. Starting off with the all new version of the Photos app, which I just want to tell you right off the bat, I don't think this change is going to go over well. Apple has given the Photos app the biggest redesign in the history of the iPhone, eliminating all of the different pages and tabs that you used to have into one single scrolling page that has access to everything. At the top of your screen, you have the usual photo grid, which you can expand by swiping up. And then in here, you can zoom out or zoom in just like you could before, separating things into months and years. But below your main library is where Apple is going to automatically suggest some content that they think you might be interested in looking back at. But at the very bottom, you actually have the ability to customize all of this. So you can fully change the order of this, see what comes up first versus last or in the middle, and allow you to sort of have access to the things you want most, but still having it all in one page is just... I, I've tried to love this and it is just not good. Although across all the other apps on your iPhone, Apple's actually made some incredible changes that I thought we would never see. Things like in the Messages app, there's entirely new ways to animate text. There's a load of new animations that give your characters much more life than before. And now you can react to message using things like stickers and emojis, not just the six default reactions that we've had for a while. So it makes them so much more fun when you're talking to people, especially if you have inside references in your chats that feels much more 
more personal. You can also finally schedule messages with iOS 18. So if you want somebody to get a text at a certain time, just like you could schedule an email now baked directly into the messages app native, you can go down here and select that option for an iMessage to be sent later. And if you have friends with Android phones, iOS 18 also introduces RCS text messaging. So now when you send videos or photos to friends on Android, they will actually send in a high resolution format, keeping their quality. There's also some big upgrades in the actual phone app here. There is T9 dialing now. So when you're dialing someone's number, it will predictably suggest who you might be wanting to call manually. And you can now search through your recent call history. So it is so much easier to find when and how long you talk to somebody. Next up, it's also way easier to find your passwords in iOS 18 with the new passwords app. Apple has finally removed your iCloud keychain passwords list from settings to its own dedicated spot that will sync across a new app on all of your Apple products. It is so much easier and faster to find a password that you're looking for. The layout is, I think, really good too. And you can even search Wi-Fi passwords in here. So if you go into this section, it'll show you a list of all your known Wi-Fi networks. So now you don't have to keep all of your passwords in your Notes app. Although the Notes app did get some huge changes this year, like the ability to do math now in line. You can just type out equations in the Notes app and your iPhone will solve these problems for you in real time. So organize things better. You have collapsible sections in Notes, so it's really easy to sift through information more quickly. And with iOS 18, you can also now record audio directly to your Notes app. And using AI, Apple can transcribe your voice recording in real time, which would be incredibly helpful in something like a college lecture where there's a lot of information very quickly. And I mentioned that new math notes feature, right? Well, that also corresponds to big changes in the calculator app for iPhone. You can turn it into landscape mode for a brand new scientific calculator. And if you want to do conversions, that is also native in the calculator app now. So whether it's currency or weight, you can input whatever you want, select the output that you desire and get that information effectively on your phone. Plus there's finally a history tape in the calculator. So you can look back at calculations or conversions that you've done. So if you want to reference something in the past, you don't have to re-input it again just to see what you found. Moving on to the wallet app now, I want to show you the coolest feature here this year, which is something called Tap to Cash, where you can bring two iPhones together and basically bumping them to effectively exchange money from your iPhone wallet to theirs. They made the animation look nuts with these gold particles transferring from your iPhone cash wallet to your friends, and it makes it so much easier to pay somebody, plus it looks way cooler as well, and it feels like a physical exchange in a way it never really has. iOS 18 is also a quietly large year for gaming on iPhone because Apple has implemented a brand new gaming mode that basically shuts off all background processes to give your CPU and GPU the maximum possible performance for extended throughput while you're gaming, basically giving you the best possible graphics and performance even if it's a longer gaming session. And they've also improved AirPods and controllers to be lower latency this year too. Now overall, those are my favorite changes in iOS 18, but there's so many smaller things that Apple was added to. Like your reminders are now baked into the calendar app so you can see everything in the same spot. The camera app has gained a new five second self timer option that comes in addition to three and 10 seconds. And if somebody does need the Wi-Fi, you can go into your passwords and Wi-Fi section and show them a QR code so it's easy for them to join. There's just so many small changes in addition to major new customization options and features we've been waiting on forever that makes iOS 18 on your phone feel like a new phone in a way that updates for a few years just haven't. So let me know what your favorite new feature is down below. And if you enjoyed watching this, drop a like. It seriously helps me out. Share it with somebody else and hit subscribe for more videos on iOS 18. And of course, the iPhone 16 coming very soon. Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I've been Sam and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.